Hey, it's Straw Hat Sam here. I'm out here in the field with this assortment of alpha gels, and I've also got the pigeon. I'm gonna throw these on here and see how durometer is a factor in vibration filtration. In this experiment, the factor that we're trying to isolate is the squishiness difference between these uh, bushings. Installed on the pigeon right now are alpha gel A1, but I got alpha gel B, uh, A2 right here and these custom-made silicone grommets. This is 20A shore hardness. I'll be testing out two types of lenses. One is the Laowa 7.5 millimeter, 150 grams. I'll also be testing the Samyang 12 millimeter. This is 255 grams. I'll be testing both lenses at the same exact camera tilt angle. I have installed a flight controller onto the back plate of the lens assembly in order to measure the vibrations that the lens experiences directly while during flight. I'm not using the most pristine of propellers for this experiment just because I want to get a little bit of extra vibration so we can uh, get better results. While running the 7.5mm lens, I'm going to be flying some acro stuff, lots of aggressive maneuvers, and I'm going to try to repeat that for each of the three types of uh, vibration damping gummies. And then when I throw the big lens on here, I'm going to do smooth, slow cruising flights so I can get a better idea of the, uh, the image quality with each of the three stiffnesses of gummies. Okay, we're doing Alpha Gel A1 first with the light lens, doing some acro, and I'm going to just walk you through the maneuvers that I'm trying to recreate each time. Okay, first I'm going to do a, uh, a punch out and then a sharp maneuver. Pitch down. Roll out of it, slow descent, and then I'm going to do an Immelman, do a little bit of cruising, turn around, okay, let's uh, do some slalom, okay, corkscrews next. Okay, let's turn around, go to the middle field, and let's do a inverted thing. Okay, we're inverted, yay. Going back down, let's head to the big tree. Backwards flip around, roll out, come back around, and let's land. Let's try to recreate that each time. Okay, this time around I have the heavy lens with the A1 bushings. So I'm going to just cruise around and uh, try to remember what I do so I can keep that flight path the same for the other two remaining alpha gel bushings. Okay, taking off. And I'm just going to do a, a slow lap around the whole park. Just going along the perimeter, not really varying my altitude too much, just kind of soaring along like a hawk. Okay, and now I'm just going to maintain a straight line so I can look at the footage really closely. I'm not touching the sticks right now. Okay, breaking out of that. Let's go low now. I almost hit a bird or something. Okay, just gonna weave easily between these trees. Maybe get a little bit of a ground effect. I'm trying to make sure not to crash too. That should help with the data, right? Okay, I'm gonna do a big helical arc thing. A big swoopy swoop. This probably looks like trash in the footage. 
because I'm not really focusing on an object, but that's okay. Okay, we did our swoopy swoops. Let's get real close to an object and just do a, a slow orbit. Okay, let's call that good. Heading it back in for a landing. I swapped out the Alpha Gel A1s for Alpha Gel A2, which is a little bit stiffer. And uh, I'm gonna do the same two flights, one acro and then one cruising flight. So we're moving on to the red silicone grommets. I made a little modification to the cage in order to accommodate these. Because these are unibody, it requires the full thickness of the carbon fiber. So normally with the alpha gels, I have little pockets that are cut into the carbon fiber because they have very, uh, they need a thin um, plate in order to work properly. So to get around that, I made little PLA washer inserts, which will take up the extra space to provide these with the full thickness. These guys are pretty easy to install. You kind of use them just like a flight controller gummy. So you just take out the aluminum spacer on the inside first, 
and then you shove them inward and upward. Inward and upward is what we say. There we go. Then after placing it, you put the sleeve back in and uh, that kind of locks it into place. Okay, what I've done here is taken screenshots of Black Box Explorer uh, while it's full screen and the, using the default scaling on the spectrographs. That way I can get consistent sizing between all of them. This time around when comparing gyro data, I am still using Black Box Explorer, but I'm trimming it. So we're starting when motors start and then we're ignoring the landing. So skipping all the way to the end, that's the landing and I can set it to be out point right there. This is the roll axis of the Laowa 7.5 millimeter, the lighter 150 gram lens. And we have alpha gel A1, alpha gel A2, and the silicone. So just comparing A2, A1, A2, A1. All right. And then comparing A2 to the 20A silicone, the red ones, Red ones, A2. Red ones, A2. 
All right, let me zoom in here and change the opacity so you can see uh, this is A2, and then this is the uh, silicone superimposed, and you can see how it seems to be growing some noise in other areas of the frequency spectrum. Let's do that with um, comparing to A1. So here's the A1, and then silicone. Moving on to pitch, uh, let's zoom in here. Okay, so this is uh, A1, this is A2, and this is the 20A. Once again, A1, A2, and 20A. Let's do that trick I did before with opacity. Whoa. So A1, 20A. Now for the yaw axis with the Laowa 7.5 millimeter. Okay, here is alpha gel A1. And here's A2. A2, A1, A2, A1. Very similar. Okay, and then here's 20A, the silicone, the red ones. Silicone, A2. Silicone, A2. Okay, let's superimpose the 20A over the A1 bushing using opacity. Okay, um, here's alpha gel A1 and then slowly fading in the 20A. So we have a little spike around 100 hertz. Moving on to the Samyang 12 millimeter, 255 gram lens, a big honking thing. Um, okay, so here is alpha gel A1 on the roll axis and A2, it's a big jump from A2 to A1. Let's check that out, A2, A1. A2, A1. Okay, and then 20A, compare 20A to A2, 20A, A2, 20A. All right, um, so it's less of a jump from A2 to 20A on the roll axis. Let's do the opacity thing. This is A1, and then fading in the 20A silicone grommets. Next is pitch axis with the heavy 12 millimeter Samyang lens. Here is the alpha gel A1. Okay, and let's unhide the A2. All this stuff on the left from 0 to 100 hertz, I think that's wind that was causing some turbulence. And because I remember one of the flights was especially windy. So that could be that. Also, maybe it's a bad tune for that particular firmness of alpha gel. And then anywho, around the motor noise frequency, uh, it's definitely increased in noise from A2 to A1, A2, A1, A2, A1. Okay, now let's go to 20A. Here's A2. 20A, the red grommets or bushings, there seems to be none of that big noise stuff that's on the left, like the A2, but the uh, magnitude of the motor noise is higher than the A2. Okay, so here's A1 fading in the 20A stiff bushings. All right, so that's the comparison there. And this is for the pitch axis. Lastly, let's look at the yaw axis with the Samyang 12 millimeter. Here's alpha gel A1, A2, and 20A red grommet. Okay, so comparing A1 to A2, A1, A2, A1, A2, A1, A2. Okay, and then 20A to A2, here's the 20A, here's the A2. So it looks like the 20A actually has less noise then the A2. This is the A2, and this is the 20A. Okay, hiding the A2, let's do the opacity thing on the 20A. So many words and letters. Okay, so here's A1, and then fading in the 20A on top of it. My conclusions on this testing are that the stiffer 20A bushings 
definitely introduce more noise and you can see it in the spectrographs pretty easily. In general, there seems to be a heightened noise floor and also there tends to be spikes, usually around the 100 hertz range, which is a little concerning. Looking at the footage though, there really isn't much of a difference at all in terms of the image quality when using the stiff bushings versus Alpha Gel A2 or A1. But the fact remains that there is more noise getting to the lens, and so I want my components to be in as clean of an environment as possible during flight. So because of that, I'm not gonna recommend these stiff bushings for the pigeon, but I am going to keep these around perhaps for cine lifters because this stiffer durometer probably would be quite suitable for a heavier camera. Alpha gels are expensive, and right now it's worth the extra price to ensure good, clean footage, but I'm gonna work on making a softer version of this gummy to try to get it to the same durometer around the Alpha Gel A1. I think the durometer or the stiffness of these bushings is a factor because we saw a noise level increase from A1 to A2. Even though it's the same formula, it's different stiffnesses, and we saw that really reflected in the spectrographs. So as such, I think it's worth making this unibody bushing but in a soft durometer that's as close as possible to the A1. There is a 10A shore durometer material out there, but it's often used in the adult toy industry, so it might be harder to procure. Plus, manufacturing is gonna be more difficult since it's so soft and gummy. But I do wanna give it a shot.